Hey guys, welcome to episode number one of a brand new series on a brand new game here on the Chesnoy Gaming Channel. As you can tell from the title and what's on your screen right now, this is episode number one of a Manchester United career mode on FIFA 18. Myself and a number of other YouTubers were lucky enough to be invited down to an early capture event and by grinding my backside off, I do actually have a full season's worth of career mode content to bring to you before full release in this Manchester United series. So if you enjoy, do make sure to hit that like button. If you're looking forward to FIFA 18, then smash the subscribe button as well because there's so much FIFA 18 content on the way to you between now and full release from me and then obviously plenty of stuff from full release towards the rest of the FIFA 18 year. Now don't worry, obviously you can tell this is a post-commentary, but the rest of the FIFA 18 content that comes to you once full release is out will be with my normal face cam and live commentary, etc., as has been the case with all of my content over the past 18 months or so. But this is just to give you a taste of what career mode is like on FIFA 18 before we get stuck into some full series on, uh, on full release, and I'll be streaming a lot as well. So do make sure you follow me on Twitch. There will be a link in the description down below. You can see the board objectives here, brand exposure, domestic success, and continental success are all critical to the Manchester United board. No real surprise, their financial actually very low. No financial requirements of me whatsoever. Youth development, not that important to the board either, but they do want the treble from me. They want the FA Cup or Football League Cup. They want the Premier League, and they want the Europa League as well. Uh, to achieve those goals, rather large transfer budget. In fact, the biggest transfer budget that I've seen on the game for ages in the Premier League. 148.8 million pounds. Now, we'll have some videos coming out soon of the transfer budgets for the Premier League, for La Liga, for the Bundesliga and for Serie A as well. So let me know in the comment section which of those you'd like to see first. And I'll get that uploaded as soon as I possibly can. You will have... Uh, potentially a second video for me today. If not, there will definitely be double uploads every day between now and full release, if not perhaps three uploads, depending on how much I can get done before I move house in 48 hours' time. So uh, hopefully you enjoyed. This is what the new squad report looks like. Of course, I did do a little bit of a rundown with a video not long ago on the channel on Transfer Deadline Day, actually, on the 31st of August. EA gave me special permission to upload some career mode footage to show you the transfer uh, cutscenes, etc. If you missed that video, then do check the channel page for it, because I go into a bit more detail about the actual features themselves whereas now we're going to be cracking on as if uh, you know we were used to the new features and hopefully we can uh, we can get some good transfers in because I'm looking to improve this team of course with this being a preview series I will be kind of making transfers for the sake of making transfers but there are definitely areas in this uh, Manchester United side where it could do with improving anyway so you can see the squad report going on on screen right now a few centre-backs that uh, are at the club that are decent are Eric Bailly and, of course, Chris Smalling. V uh, Lindelof is actually a new signing too, of course, this season. Manchester United put that through in real life. Phil Jones is still here. Marcus Rojo is still here as well. But uh, Chris Smalling actually had a little bit of a downgrade. Ratings aren't necessarily final at this capture event, but I think it's pretty safe to assume that uh, not much will change at all between now and full release. So Chris Smalling there at 81 rated. Expecting him to uh, still be pretty decent on Ultimate Team, but whether he'll be as effective as he was last year, I really don't know. Wing-back-wise, at left-back, we have Luke Shaw and Matteo Damian. He's actually now down as a left-back by default, although last year he was a right-back. Do, of course, have uh, Antonio Valencia at right-back. And actually, Ashley Young is down as a right-back this year as well, which is quite interesting. Daley Blind is listed as a left-back, but can, of course, play in central midfield or at centre-back too. New signing in at the club, Nemanja Matic here, 83 rated. Do have another uh, couple of CDMs. Of course, Marouane Fellaini is kind of Jose Mourinho's go-to default uh, defensive tactic to throw him on the field. Michael Carrick still at the club despite ageing now. I do end up transfer listing a number of players here, though, whilst doing this squad report. And uh, hopefully, we can get some decent transfers in to replace them. We do, of course, have that rather sizable transfer budget to help us do that, and uh, we'll be able to afford players of quite some quality. In an out-and-out -out central midfield role, of course, we have Ander Herrera and Paul Pogba as my two main central midfielders. There are a lot of youngsters, actually, at Manchester United, and I did list the majority of them up for loan. Andreas Pereira there on the left-hand side as well, next to Anthony Martial, who will, of course, be starting on my left-hand side. One matter is here as a cam, but I'm going to be utilising Henrik Mkhitaryan at cam because I just prefer him in a central role rather than out wide and with players like uh, Anthony Martial uh, I don't really need to uh, be playing someone like Henrik Mkhitaryan out wide when uh, he can have so much more of an impact on me or for me in the game in the, in that central role but uh, 
We've got Lingard as well, of course, to play on the right-hand side. But a number of these players that I've been mentioning, actually, are going to be moving on. Uh, of course, up top, we have James Wilson and uh, Dernley. They'll both be going out on loan. So my main two strikers are, of course, brand-new signing Romelu Lukaku and Marcus Rashford. So I'm hoping that uh, the players can grow quite well, even in just this first season. I didn't do any training at all. Training feature is still the same this year as it was last year and uh, a couple of years previous. So uh, don't worry too much about not seeing too much training. I didn't necessarily focus on youth development either with regards to youth scouts, because of course this was only a one season career mode. I wasn't sure how much I'd be able to get done. And obviously I'm not gonna be getting far enough through a, uh, a save to be able to warrant bringing up any youngsters. But like I said, I did grind and we did get a full season here at Manchester United. So uh, over the next 12 days or so between now and full release, there'll be so much content coming to you with regards to career mode. I've got some ultimate team stuff as well. I wanted to do quite a bit more fuck content this year while still maintaining the amount of career mode content I put out. So it's going to be a very, very busy year. If you do enjoy though, like I say, do hit the like button, subscribe to the channel too to make sure you don't miss out on anything between now and full release and for the rest of the FIFA year. Now, because this was at the capture event, they haven't actually updated the squad's fully yet so there are a couple of transfers that haven't gone through so i decided because i won't be able to sign in first season on full release because he's just recently transferred of course i'd go for usman dembele here on the right hand side of midfield now of course with regards to the way that transfers work this year rather than going in and doing it uh, over the course of a few days you now go into this club negotiation screen on the transfer hub and then into the cut scenes for transfer windows that uh, you can see on here and actually interestingly enough it's not just for transfer windows something that i uh, didn't mention in the career mode update video i did a few uh, few days ago a couple of weeks ago is that you can now ad address buying and loaning players and selling players outside of the transfer window and have these cutscenes, etc and then the, the transfer will go through on the first day of the new window so even if you don't get something done in the window it isn't the end of this end of the world you will be able to get that done even the very next day if uh, you so wish to uh, make sure that you get that player for the next window without having to risk potentially losing them to someone else by the time the next window arrives you can see here trying to throw in bids to get uh, Bruce Dortmund to accept the offer for Usman Dembele. They're a little bit stubborn. They wanted upwards of £50 million, and uh, I wasn't necessarily too keen to offer something of that size initially, but I decided to uh, just go for it anyway, make sure we got the deal done. £51.3 million was the final transfer fee, so it's time to move on to uh, discussing the contract terms. Of course, the player comes into your office and will sit down and talk to you. Now, with regards to these contract terms, sometimes they will actually give you criteria that they want. Other times they will give you free roam. Here, of course, you get the uh, option myself of deciding what his squad role will be, but they decided that they would like a four-year contract. You can, of course, negotiate, and if you don't necessarily uh, agree with the uh, terms that they're offering or the terms that they would like, then you can offer something different. And uh, that is what I did a little bit later on in this window but as you can see we offered them a four-year contract no release clause and then it's time to offer him his wage he's only on forty nine and a half thousand pounds right now is man dembele at uh, Borussia dortmund so i didn't want to necessarily offer him too much but went here with a, a one million pound signing bonus plus seventy thousand pounds a week and uh, a little bit of a bonus as well with regards goals scored giving him 1.5 million pounds once he scores 10 goals and uh, they actually accepted that straight away so i was kind of worried to myself a little bit that i perhaps oversold that particular deal but never mind Usman Dembele is our first brand new signing and it's time to go into our first game as Manchester United manager the preseason tournaments are running basically exactly the same as they have done in previous years you can tell there that uh, I am playing on legendary but one interesting thing that I noticed playing this preseason tournament that there was definitely this year a gulf in class between the best sides and the weaker teams. In previous years, there's been a little bit of uh, discontent in the FIFA community with regards to the way that lesser teams play in career mode. You've seen people complain that, you know, teams in League 2 play like Barcelona and aren't uh, necessarily that easy to beat and will give you just as good a game as uh, lower league sides in the Premier League. Whereas this game, with my full-strength first team playing against a weak... Uh, Columbus crew team has been mentioned that uh, not, they didn't start their first strength team 
themselves and actually a number of teams in pre-season don't do that until you get to like the semi-final or final stage then I actually ended up running Riot here against Columbus Crew but don't worry don't read too much into it the uh, the rest of the games played against higher rated and uh, better quality teams were actually a lot more difficult than this one but it scored some nice goals actually Henrik Mkhitaryan there getting a really nice shot from distance to make it 3-0 just after half time getting it out of his feet and then firing that right into the bottom corner moving away from the keeper at all times and we're actually going to go up the other end and make it four here. With regards to pre-season highlights, I tend not to throw too many in. I tend to, uh, you know, make sure that the majority of the highlights are just goals, if they're enough to warrant it, if not a couple of highlights and then goals. But once we get into the full season, there'll be much more comprehensive uh, highlights with regards to chances and uh, goals, of course, and controversial topics. But another good finish there, actually, from uh, Henrik Mkhitaryan to make it 5-0. I very, very much enjoyed playing with the Armenian in that central role. They were going to get themselves one back here. Really nice ball in behind, actually. Going to square it into the middle and pull it back. I just get very, very unlucky with the fact that uh, Eric Bailly tries to take a touch stick to get the ball under control. Ends up deflecting it up towards the goalkeeper, and it does fly into the back of the net. Uh, David De Gea can't quite react in time, comes off his arm and goes over the line. So the first goal that I concede on FIFA 18 is pretty comical, but uh, thankfully it wasn't necessarily a bug or a glitch or anything. I was just rather unfortunate for Eric Bailly and David De Gea that it ended up going that way. 15 minutes to go, it's 5-1. Marcus Rashford played in here on the left-hand side, actually utilised him in a wide role initially to ensure that Romelu Lukaku could stay on the field and Lukaku stayed on the field and scored the sixth goal of the game or my sixth goal of the game at least Rashford involved getting the ball into the middle defender misses it at the near post and it's a simple tucked home finish from Romelu Lukaku and then in stoppage time we were able to make it seven Paul Popper with a nice turn and actually the movement on this was brilliant and the keeper looks like initially from first glance that that's a keeping mistake as uh, we dab on them rather <laughs> rather unfortunately for them but uh, it's actually an extremely good and extremely accurate and powerful hit from Pop you can see how into the corner that is and I don't think many keepers would have actually given that a good old uh, chance of being stopped so thankfully for me it flew into the bottom corner we get a rather <laughs> Rather well, convincing 7-1 win in our first game against Columbus Crew, but like I say, don't worry, the rest of the games aren't that one-sided. It was the fact that I was playing my first team and they had a rather weak side out, and that one was as one-sided as it was. But an offering here for Luke Shaw that I rejected, I will be looking for a new first team left-back, but initially uh, Luke Shaw is going to be continuing to start at left-back for me here, playing against uh, Atletico Madrid now. In another group stage game, I will be simulating a number of games in this career mode. I won't be playing every single one, but uh, decided to play the first two games of the preseason tournament here to give you some gameplay as well as, of course, the uh, the transfer stuff. They're playing a 4-4-2, and as you can see there, it wasn't the strongest lineup from them either. No Jan Oblak in goal. It's actually a really low-rated guy in goal for them, which meant that he didn't actually perform as well as he might like to. But Usman Dembele there, tucking that away rather nicely to give us a 1-0 lead just after half time really nice move actually you see the defender tuck in there which uh, was pretty unnecessary actually rather poor from uh, the left back but we we're able to tuck it away nicely good first time hit from Dembele to get his first goal for the club and our first goal of this game but they actually worked something quite nicely at the beginning of the second half here inside to uh, Vieto or trying to get it to Vieto ends up at Gamero's feet and that is a rocket of a finish no chance for the keeper despite it being David De Gea in between the sticks that was rifled into the top right hand corner a very, very good finish from the Frenchman. The uh, shot power just too much and the accuracy was very, very good indeed. A little bit of a mistake for me, not able to get the ball away here when the ball was coming in there. Tried to just uh, get, get it under control and couldn't do so. Drop free, but great finish from Kevin Gamera to uh, bring us back to 1-1. We were, however, on the hour mark, able to go up the other end and extend our lead again. I was actually thinking that that was offside from Marcus Rashford when the ball was played through, but the linesman deemed it onside and uh, he buries it into the bottom corner to make it 2-1. We have our lead back again. Of course, a win here in the second game of three in the group stage will pretty much guarantee our progression through to the next round of this pre-season tournament. And with £11 million pounds up, for, uh, up for winnings, then uh, even though we have a massive transfer budget, I kind of wanted to make sure that I won this tournament as well to make sure we had the maximum amount of money to bring in the maximum amount of players. The defender just misjudges the flight of the ball there at the near post. There's actually Marcus Rashford again that tucks that away into the bottom corner to make it 3-1 just three minutes from time. His teammates very much appreciative of that. Everybody's celebrating with the youngster, giving him that little ego boost. So we shake the hand. Unfortunately, despite the fact that there are some new managers in the game this year, uh, Diego Simeone isn't one of them. So there isn't a uh, an in-game manager character for Simeone. But there is Unai Emery. So uh, he'll be there for that Paris Saint-Germain game. We get a loan offer here for Mitchell, which I'll be accepting. 
Like I said, I sent a number of youngsters out on loan. But I will be simulating that game against PSG in the next episode. And uh, I think I simulated uh, a couple of other games in the preseason tournament as well. Spoilers, I get to the final. I played the final, but I ended up simulating the next game against Paris Saint-Germain. And then I believe the game after that was uh, Real Madrid, actually, in the first knockout round. Or did I play that? I actually can't remember off the top of my head. I have played uh, a number of games in this series. And to be honest, uh, I grinded out a full season in the space of about... 36 hours so I will struggle to remember what happened in games from time to time so I guess at times it will feel like a live con when I'm actually reacting to what's going on on screen because I can't remember what actually happened but that is going to bring episode one to a close of this little mini series mic quality will improve once I get back home I'm actually recording this in my hotel room right now so apologies if the quality of the audio isn't quite what you're used to on the channel like I say it will definitely improve once I get home and back to my normal setup but I wanted to make sure you guys got this on the first day that we were allowed to upload it so Drop the video a like if you enjoy. Subscribe to the channel to make sure you don't miss out on anything else. Let me know in the comment section what you think of career mode so far this year. Are you looking forward to getting your hands on it? I'm definitely looking forward to getting my hands on full release. My first full series will be with Chelsea. So uh, if you're keen for that, then make sure you're subscribed. But for now, that's all from me for today. Thank you very much for watching. Double uploads every day from tomorrow onwards, I promise. And for now, I'll see you next time.